Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're going to be wiping down our cylinder walls with some ATF, automatic transmission fluid, to clean out any of that honing debris that might still be remaining on the cylinder walls. Then we're going to be clearancing our piston rings and our bearings. Let's get started. Hey guys, I put on some brand new gloves and I've got some paper towel and we're going to be using some this Liquid Molly ATF. Uh, it's just any ATF will do. It has some detergents in there that will help clean it. So we're just going to be wiping it all down until the paper towel comes out nice and clean. I thought it was going to be red, but that's fine. So as we start wiping, as you can see, you can see that it's starting to get some coloration. That's the leftover debris that's on the cylinder walls. Yeah, look at that. So we're just going to keep doing this until it is all clean. All right, now all the cylinders are cleaned out. I'm just going to quickly go over it with a microfiber cloth to catch any um, rainy dust or any those pieces of uh, lint or anything like that that might have got trapped in the cylinder. There's pieces of little bits of paper here and there because of, we're using paper towels. But this also helps clean it to ensure that there is no more dirtiness. Like the towel will come up black if it is still dirty. But as you can see, it's pretty clean. All right guys, the piston rings that I'm gonna be using are these ones here from Engine Tech. I bought the whole rebuild kit from Rock Auto. Um, it was affordable and I think it's pretty decent stuff. Um, a lot of it usually sells. This is made in the USA, so I'm good with that. We're going to be using the whole engine uh, tech rebuild kit on this motor. So it's not going to be purchasing OEM stuff, but it is just the engine tech kit essentially. So let's put the rings in and see how the gap is. Uh, they should be already pre-gapped. We want to check the gap still just to make sure that it is within tolerances. All right, guys, to measure the ring gap, all you do is you insert the ring in here, push it down with the piston until it's about 15 to 20 millimeters from the bottom, and then you will measure the gap with a feeler gauge. And you will have to match it to the specs of the uh, piston ring manufacturer. So the engine tech piston rings are already pre-gapped. What we want, really want to do is just to measure the gap to ensure that it is not too small of a tolerance or too big of a tolerance. Um, so let's just get started and you only have to measure the first and second ring and make sure after you measure each one on each cylinder You keep them separate for each individual cylinder All right, here is the first piston ring. So what we would do is we would just push it together feed it in Whip it And now it's seated in there now we we'll push it down to square it with a piston ring I mean with a piston so I just pulled one of the pistons that I had bagged up and you would push it all the way down until it's about 15 to 20 millimeters. I think that's good. Now we will measure the gap that's inside here. All right, as you can see, piston ring is in and you would measure the gap right up there up the top with a feeler gauge. All right, guys, so these are the bearings that I'm going to be running. They're the engine tech one spot. Like I said, they are made by King Bearing. Um, they're just remanufactured. If you look at the stamp here, it does um, have the King Bearing stamp on there. And there's other stuff that have the King Bearing logo on it. For example, the thrust washers. These are also from the uh, Engine Tech set, but they're made by King Bearing. And you see the King Bearing logo on these as well. So, how we're going to be measuring the clearances is using plastic gauge. So, we're just going to install these um, bearings into the block. And then we're just going to wipe up the the crank and then drop the crank in, bolt everything down with the plastic gauge and then check the clearances using the plastic gauge. All right, for the installation of the bearings, you want the side with the grooves on the bottom. This will line up with the holes here. So essentially there is a tab on each of these um, areas and all you do is just slip it in there. So we'll get on this side and we'll just start the installation on this. All right, so this side is installed. Now we'll install the other side. All right, here are all the caps that I've 
wrapped up and covered in oil. So you just want to wipe off, wipe off any of the residual oil and then install the cap. Let me get bearing. There we go. Right here's the crank. We're just going to wipe up the journals of the crank before we put it in there. And how this would go in is the um, middle two cylinders, the for the rods, supposed to be pointing upwards. So I'll show you guys after I put it in. So the two rod journals right, right here and right here, these ones have to be pointing up. So um, now we'll put some plastic gauge on each one of these and then we'll check the clearance. Right now that all the plastic gauge is in, we're just gonna put all the caps back on and then we're gonna torque it down to spec, which is 56 foot pounds. And then uh, we'll take them off and check the clearances. All right, if you guys don't remember how your uh, main caps go, number five is on the flywheel side. The arrows all point towards the oil pump. So, or your timing belt side. So one would be here, two, three, four, five. So it's pointing this way. Good. Now we can remove it and check all the plastic gauge. All right, with that removed, carefully remove every single cap again. There's the plastic gauge all pressed. And then now what we're gonna be doing is using the measurement on the plastic gauge here, this pamphlet. We're just gonna see where the clearance is at. So all we really need is just a piece of paper like that. We just cut it out. The green and the white indicate the measurements. So we'll check to see what the widest points of the plastic gauge is. And if it is within spec that we can run these bearings. Let me do it with 1.025. All right, now that we've confirmed that the main cap bearings are all good, we're just gonna wipe off the plastic gauge and we're gonna install the crank now and fully torque it down uh, with some assembly lube and all that. And then we're gonna install the pistons with the rod bearings. That way we can see if the rod bearings are clearance properly. All right, the, I'm just using the Permatex Ultra Slick and just engine assembly loop. So we're just gonna apply lubricant on all the bearing surfaces. All right, just gonna spread some of that lube all over. It's extra sticky stuff. All right, same protocol. Drop her in. Okay, first stage of torquing, 22 foot pounds. Now we're going to set it to the 56 foot pounds and torque the rest. All right, that's all torqued down. We're all good now. And then we could technically now spin it by hand just to check it. It'll be tight but you should be able to spin it by hand. All right guys, now it's time to check the rod bearing clearances with the plastic gauge. So what I'm gonna do is just unwrap all these pistons uh, and I've got it clean. And I'm gonna change just the bearings here and then I'm gonna drop them in and then torque them to spec. And then we'll check it with the plastic gauge to determine if it's within the nice tolerances there. All right, now we gotta put a piece of plastic gauge right here 
along this bearing surface here, uh, or the journal, and then you're going to put the piston in. Because there's no ring on it, it's going to fall, so you just got to be very careful when slipping it in. So we're going to do it from the bottom. scratch anything like so and then we'll take, put the band cap on all right it has been squished i'll bring you guys up close to take a look All right guys, here's the plastic gauge all pressed in already. Now we can take our little measuring piece of paper here and check what it's at. So it is just under 0 0.025, um, but the clearance, so the clearance is good. It's supposed to be, for new, it's supposed to be between 0 0.02 and 0 0.038, uh, and the service limit is at 0 0.050. So this is right under the 0 0.025. So I think this is good clearance. So we're good on this one bearing journal. Hey guys, so it's been a couple weeks now. I actually have to stop the whole engine assembly process because I found a couple things wrong with the parts that I had, mainly the piston rings and the connecting rod bearings. So I ended up shipping those back to Rock Auto uh, and getting them replaced under warranty, which they have arrived today. Here are the new piston rings and here are the new connecting rod bearings. Now, I had to pay to get it shipped back because I've had these parts for longer than 30 days, which means I have to get it replaced under warranty instead. Um, but it was still cheaper than getting a brand new set from uh, Rock Auto and getting it shipped here. So um, the thing I encountered that's wrong with the piston rings was that the first ring, the end gap was a little bit too large for comfort. And then when you get to the second ring, the second ring is supposed to be a little bit larger than the first ring, but it was actually a lot tighter in tolerances and it was smaller than the, the end gap was smaller than the first ring. So that's actually improperly gapped. Uh, so I shipped them back. So hopefully this set here, this new one, we'll check them later, has a better gapping. They're supposed to be pre-gapped, so you're not supposed to do any gapping yourself uh, or modifying of the piston rings. So we will check these out. Hopefully these are gapped properly. If not, I did actually buy another set of piston rings by NPR. These ones I already checked the end gap on, and these are actually okay to run. So if these ones will turn out okay, we'll just run the NPRs but I'm probably gonna to lean towards running the NPRs anyways. Um, the thing I found that was wrong with the uh, connecting rod bearings is that they have this oil hole here. This is supposed to allow oil to pass through the connecting rod and lubricate the cylinder. Well, this hole wasn't lined up with the connecting rod. Um, I actually just checked these new bearings that I received today against the connecting rod and they are still not lined up. I may just run them anyways. They're just off by a little bit. I'll show you guys up close in a sec, um, but yeah, it's a little bit odd that this hole doesn't fully line up. The OEM one, it lines up perfectly with the hole. Uh, it will still allow oil through, but yeah, I'm just a little bit concerned. But it seems like this is the way that's manufactured because this is my second set. Anyways, I'll bring you guys up close and I'll show you guys what the connecting rod bearing looks like on the connecting rod. All right, so this is the bearing here. You see that hole there? It is perfectly aligned because this is the OEM bearing. Now let's put in the new one and then you'll see that it doesn't line up at all. And this is what I encountered while clearancing these. So it's kind of a, a bummer. Now, as you can see with this in, you can see in the video, that's covering half the hole. So um, I'm sure that it could still run like this because you're, you're still getting clearance here, but um, it's just odd that it's so off uh, compared to this original, which is perfectly centered. Um, but yeah, I'm not gonna send these back because it's gonna encounter the exact same issue anyways. So we're just gonna, I'm probably gonna just run it like this and I do not wanna modify the bearing. I could technically grind it down and open up the hole a little bit more, but uh, that might compromise the bearing. So probably just gonna run it as is because the oil hole is still functional. I can still see the whole light right through it. It's just that not as much oil will pass through it.
All right, let's check the uh, bearing clearance here. Um, it matches up with the 0 0.038, which is within clearance for this bearing. So we're just going to check the rest of them, and, um, and then we'll see if all the bearings are cleared properly. If so, we just pretty much reinstall these bearings as is. All right guys, so I just finished checking the end gaps on all the replacement piston rings from Engine Tech, and they're all fine now. They're actually very comparable end gaps to the NPR. So we could run either the Engine Tech or the NPR, but I think we'll go with the NPR because they're made in Japan. On a side note, I think I'm going to run the replacement connecting rod bearings, even though the rod bearings still don't line up with the uh, connecting rod oil hole here. Um, I think it'll still allow oil to lubricate cylinders because it's not completely blocking the hole. So I think it should be fine. Um, but let me know in the comments below, guys, if you guys have experienced issues with the bearing not lining up with the oil hole. But that's pretty much it for this video. We're pretty close. All that's left is just to reassemble the engine. Anyways, guys, I hope this video helps you guys out. If you haven't already, please comment, like, and subscribe, and share my videos. As always, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.